For somebody that is yet to sell co-living and is looking at this series and going, I don't understand it. I don't get who the tenant is. How would you describe the tenant that's in our co-living home? Uh, we've got the data, so depending on the area, we can tell you that. We can tell you the demographic, the, you know, the average occupation, the average age, um, the average tenure. We've got all that data there. So um, if they ask me for a specific area, I go, well, we'll tell you what we already know about that area. And that would be such an important piece of information, right? To really, for somebody to actually go, this is not, this is not a design option. This is not a, we're not pioneering now. We pioneered co-living yep. and now we've actually, we live and breathe it. We know it inside out. If you had a referral partner that's yet to sell co-living, where would you suggest they started the conversation with you? Come to the display home. Come to the display home. Uh, that's time and time again, they are converted by visiting the display home, seeing how it works, seeing for themselves, look, hey, it's not, um, it's easily converted to a family home. It's not anything specialised in the design or anything like that outside of, you know, a few minor changes. Yep. Um, come and have a look, uh, talk to us about, and let, let us show you what we already know about co-living. Let us show you the data that we've collected. We know it works because we do it. We've done it. We've got the data and we can split it down to certain locations to look at what the demographic is. But broadly speaking, who is our tenant in our co-living homes? Yep, from what I've seen, the average age is 31. Yep. Average income, 65,000 a year. Uh, we know the occupations, you know, you've got tradies, uh, cleaners, school teachers, professions like that. Yep. Um, it's three adults living in one home. There's no uh, pets, no couples, no smoking. Yes. Um, the house is well maintained. It maintains a, a visual aspect with our furniture pack, so they're not putting in, you know, not changing the, the aspect of it, but bringing in a bunch of their own stuff. Yeah. Um, it just works. And I think that's been something that, you know, like obviously we need our key sales partners to understand it. We need the investors to understand it, but we've also needed to work closely with our land vendors for them to understand that allowing a co-living home to be delivered in their land estate doesn't actually compromise the streetscape, the community. In a lot of ways, you're actually looking at, like you just mentioned, there's no pets, there's no smoking, there's no couples and there's no kids. So three employed adults living in a suburb, probably in a, on a street in a certain suburb, probably make less noise than me and my family with our puppy make on on our street yeah. um, and I think when we've had land vendors that haven't really understood co-living and have had their concerns about what it would mean with regards to the community and the streetscape I think the one thing that they've always been impressed when they've come to the display home is that you especially if you're a couple of minutes late getting off the M1 yeah. they're often parked right on the street not exactly sure which house is the co-living display because it just presents like a beautiful four bedroom family home. You've got the color schemes, you've got the facade treatments, you've got the double garage, you've got one letterbox. It it maintains that rhythm of the street. Yes, and because they, we, we know from the, the tenancy, a lot of them use public transport. So there's less cars. Like when you drive through a, a dual key suburb, there's cars everywhere. Yep. You know, the, the parents got a car, the kids got a car. A lot of our tenants, rely on transport um, from what I've seen and there's you can't tell it's like a quiet suburban area and quite often you drive through on the way to the display through that dual key area yeah struggle to weave your way through and then you come to our estate at Botanica and um, you can't tell the difference and it's funny because you know I get on my soapbox a lot about it and I know that you and I've had this conversation <laughs> previously around this kind of perception about somehow an owner occupier, an owner, you know, is a much better outcome for a street presentation than an investor. And even where I live, Northern Gold Coast, residential street, I rent, but the place opposite me, they own. Yeah. Um, but they've turned their garage into an additional playroom. So their two four wheel drives are on the driveway. They have a caravan and a boat parked on our street because we've got, um, you know, berths at the end of our street and they've got a, um, uh, I want to say a skidoo, but that's not it. Um, a jet ski, that's the word. 
that's all parked on our street. You come to my home, which I rent, and we maintain it. We park our cars in the garage, and the people across the road who are owner occupiers feel like they they own the street, so therefore they spill out onto it. And I feel like taking photos to show land land vendors all the time, going, "Who's the owner occupier in this scenario?" You know, this whole idea that investors. And, and renters are second class citizens when we're going into residential estates feels a little ancient in it. It doesn't, it, it doesn't really prove it. You yeah. can't really see that when you go out there. In fact, it's probably the opposite in most cases, like you said. Yeah. So we've talked about the three key ingredients for co-living being the design, the furniture, and um, the property management service. How important is that property management service being in-house in delivering the outcome for the investors? It's crucial because the, the client's been sold a product based on an expected income stream. Yep. Um, they got to achieve that income stream that they were promised. Um, so management's probably key. I would, I would say if you have to stack them in order, management's probably the most important. And I think, um, I think one of the things that we've done so well is that we haven't been too arrogant about it, that we're happy to review, reset, refine, do better to achieve the outcome for the investor. Absolutely, yep. And that tenancy management, that tenancy matching, I think has been something from the disc profiling that we're doing, but even the fact that the property management team are actually asking the questions around how you come off shift if you've been working the night shift or um, are you a vegetarian? And just trying to actually make sure that, you know, if you're a, a vegan that we're putting you into, we're putting you into a household without two other massive barbecuing carnivores to establish that little community. Because I think what we're seeing is that somebody who moves into a co-living home and who's working at, you know, the nearest Woolworths, they're staying within that, that property type for a period of time yep. due to the job that they've got and the income that they're earning, right? Yeah, they make it a home. Um, and I think that just comes from experience. So if you're buying a product that and you want someone else to manage it, there's no responsibility. Whereas we deliver a product that we're responsible for. We even put a tenancy guarantee around it because yep. we know it's going to work. Um, and those little nuances with the vegetarian or the shift worker, that just comes with experience. Um, and that's probably the biggest value from our property management team um, is that experience and those little, that minutiae of detail and, and the learning that's, that's happened over the few years to make you know, better outcomes for investors essentially, longer tenancy, um, complete tenancy um, and harmony within the house, essentially happy tenants. I think that's really important and people don't necessarily see what the true value of that, but that harmony in the household and the longevity of the tenancy even just, that just protects the wear and tear on the house, right? And there's a value to that. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, people often try and work out a way that they can cut one of those ingredients out, but it's just the same with anything, right? There are ingredients that allow for a successful outcome, for a successful recipe. Yep. And if you try and, maneuver around those, you're not going to achieve what you've set out to achieve. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the key things, right? Keep in mind what attracted you to the investment in the first place. Yep. And that is having a high income property solution in a high growth area where you've got breadth of exit strategy yep. um, and longevity of the tenancy. Yeah, everything.